So I'm going to answer all the questions. <laughs> okay, fantastic. As I was asked to. So I'm going to read them again. I feel really I like embarrassed. I like people pay attention got to these what I Wonderful say. free thinking people and I'm hoping to get the attendance prize or whatever you got for <laughs> being diligent but rather unexceptional. So, here we go. Does the media acknowledge that there's a racial divide or is there a blind commitment <coughs> fostering this idea of a rainbow nation which in turn obstructs any deeper inquiry into racial divisions? in South Africa. So my view is that the media covers race when race explodes to the surface. Um, examples of extreme violence, of prejudice, and it's covered on both sides. What I think the media doesn't do, and I'll go into the different medias if indeed they exist further down, is they don't explore the everyday prejudice that is much more wounding extremely debilitating, and in some ways is the bedrock of these much bigger and more obvious conflicts that we deal with. And all I can share with you is my experience of seven years at Kai FM, where um, after some of my friends moved to Cape Town, really is, has 99.9% .9 black audience. Um, <laughs> two, topics, two topics that we covered. We did this thing and we didn't know how it will turn out. Does your Christmas party make you feel better or worse about the place where you work? And it was amazing the intensity of feeling about the way people felt. And it wasn't what they were paid, although I'm sure that came into it. It wasn't the conditions of promotion. It was about the way they were made to feel and the extent to which black people, even those promoted to corner offices, are still made to feel welcome to our club. And it was a very, very profound conversation, and I really I enjoyed it, and I'm glad we did it. More recently, we talked about graduate debt. And again, and not to take specific issue with the example Ferial gave, but there are numbers that show the emergence of a middle class. But white people like myself who emerged into that middle class came in with far fewer obligations than black people do. And that conversation is not often enough had either, because what are you complaining about? Excuse me, you've got a degree from WITS, your company's given you a nice car. Well, what they may be complaining about is that they're the fifth child, the youngest. Two brothers went down the mines to make sure they could go to school. There's another sister who's following behind. There's a cousin. There's a whole lot of stuff that has to be paid back, which is the legacy of our history. We don't have those conversations in the media. Interestingly enough, we don't have them, I think, in advertising. Kai FM convened a fabulous panel discussing the depiction of black people in advertising. And our CEO, Greg Maluka, who probably should be here instead of me, made a very, very interesting point. He said, the guy who drives the BMW and the man who consults a traditional healer are not two separate people. They are the same guy. And that leads me to my next point, that I think a lot of the depiction of what black people do and how they are in our society is structured around this idea of black exceptionalism. And we did that as a country with Nelson Mandela when we bade him farewell. I mean, a lot of people said, Madiba united us in his death. And yes, at a level he did. But again, we reached for, here were domestic workers and little kids from the neighboring private school all coming to lay flowers and that's wonderful and I don't decry it but actually I think what Madiba's death in many ways showed us was how divided we were and I'm going to speak about the way I think white people and I'm talking very generally because this is a room full of white people all of them different um, and I'm different to all of them but let's talk in broad terms they picked the bits of Madiba's life that they liked they picked the bits that were about his remarkable capacity for forgiveness, and they didn't really have much to say, I felt, or enough to say about Nelson Mandela the revolutionary. Nelson Mandela, who may very well have worn red overalls to something like Parliament, had he been in that kind of position. So I think we've got a problem there. Now I want to go back quickly to what I think is a historical root of why there are some of these blind spots, and I'm talking very broadly the white community. I see friends in the audience who are unionists who ran independent newspapers. Please forgive me for the broadness, but we are talking broadly. And I think it's important that we do, because that broad sweep, to a large extent, structures how we live. The roots of those problems, I think, for the white community were in things like the TRC. So a large number of people could sit there shaking their heads in complete horror at the thick-necked security policeman with his grey shoes and his shiny suit 
confessing to the terrible things that he did. And they were terrible, don't get me wrong. But it allowed a whole chunk of white people, largely English-speaking people, and let me at this point say my people, to say, we never voted for that. And all the institutions that entrench the much more subtle forms of white power that we deal with now, really the TRC spent far too, too little time on. The media were in and out too quickly. Business was in and out absurdly quickly. And those are the things, that is the weave of the society we're working with now. Now on the question of Rainbow Nation, I, I'm not a big fan of our Rainbow Nation addiction. And it leads us to ask some absolutely ridiculous questions. I'll come to one in a moment. At the big events like Soccer World Cups, of which I am a beneficiary, I have to say, in my other life, um, the masses are largely asked to be unpaid extras in what is an extremely high budget movie. They're meant to be volunteers at the World Cup, they're meant to be mourning or jubilant crowds at funerals or rallies, they're meant to provide this colour and then there's always the picture of how they run into people from the suburbs and other people and suddenly we're all together. Now to my ridiculous question. After the World Cup, we went into a period of strikes, as we do, because we have winters of discontent every year. People said, but we were so focused and so united at the World Cup. What's happened? It's a bit like you with your partner saying when you're having in your first stand-up knockdown fight post-wedlock, post but we were so happy on our wedding day. <laughs> what has the one got to do with the other except that it's the same people? in the same deal that has clearly been massively misunderstood. What I dislike most about this Rainbow Nation stuff, and don't get me wrong, we have to have those moments, because I think the society produces them organically anyway. I get nervous when they say, oh, we better have one more, let's have a World Cup, uh, have the Olympics. What, what is wrong about them is instead of them being opportunities for the optimism industry to go out and um, make more money by and large, we should be using them as moments to say, okay, we're having a World Cup, but what is missing on in our society that we could fund through an event like that? I've taken way too long, so I'm gonna skip through some of the other questions. Two minutes. Oh, okay, I've got two minutes 40 on my clock here. Yeah. Um, so the next question is, what are, the, what are the parameters of the race debate in the South African media? To which my answer is yes. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to jump to the last one. There was a whole chunk about white and black media that I had things to say, forgive me, but how do we build social cohesion while having a responsible public debate about racism? This is probably the most important part. Let me just say at the start, we will not be moving on from this difficult, deep, and incredibly painful and profoundly personal conversation anytime soon. I expect, as the oldest person on the panel at 55, that we hopefully you'll visit me in the old age home and we'll bash this around again. Which means that we're not just challenged as collectives, which are very fluent and fractured anyway, some of them racial and others, to get better at, re at group relations, we've got to get much, much better at personal relations. So these are my suggestions. Try all of us to listen better. And don't be in such a rush to reach conclusions. Finding better questions is just as important as coming up with what seem to be better answers. I think that's incredibly important. To the media I say there's a big difference between being clever and being wise. I think the latter is dangerously undervalued and neither of them has the slightest thing to do with being right. Because often when you're right, you're wrong. I want to say this, that, and this again is addressed I think principally to white people. Unless we are willing to listen to and try and understand everything black people say, and that doesn't mean agreeing with them, or accepting them, or backing out and backing off. But unless we're willing to listen to everything they say, then you cannot legitimately use black voices to vindicate the bits of an argument that you like. And I come back to Madiba. We have to listen to everything he said. We have to look and listen and learn from his entire life. And the final thing I want to say, because you mentioned white people are getting tired of being made to feel guilty. I. I don't know about that, but I think what I want to say is this. There is a huge difference between guilt and responsibility. Guilt tends to be a paralyzing thing that you resent. Responsibility, in my mind, is a much more powerful thing. And yes, I think you have, you, this society is entitled to turn around to every single white person and say, you are responsible for what goes on in South Africa post-1990. If you want to feel guilty about what happened before, that is your choice, but you are responsible 
We made the mess. We were part of a mess that was made. We have to be involved in fixing it. And I think if we do that, I think some of these media questions might take, sorry, oh. I put it on silent. Some of these media questions might take care of themselves. Thank you very much.